Hi everyone, and welcome to the Design to Cost via Sheet Metal demonstration. My name is Ethan, and I'm an implementation engineer at Apriori. Uh, this product demonstration is going to consist of five to ten minutes of discussion on the Sheet Metal BTC toolkit. Um, the agenda for this discussion is a little short. It's only going to be about 15 minutes here. Um, so we're going to talk about the problems some of you might be facing, how this can be a potential solution to those, where that solution can be used. Then we'll do a quick sheet metal demonstration actually working in the software. And then I'll switch over to a little bit of the reporting options that you have in regard to um, design to cost features. Before I go ahead and get moving, I'm going to go through a couple of housekeeping notes just to keep track of everything. So the first one is to remind you, if you have any questions after you view this demo, I'll be in a live meeting room from 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Feel free to join by clicking the Join Trade Show button in this virtual booth to connect and have your questions answered. Two, if that time block doesn't work for you or you prefer to meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can also schedule a time with me via the meeting scheduler. On the event website near the chat panel, choose People, select my name, which is Ethan Moon, and select and schedule a meeting with me. Alternatively, you're always welcome to leave your card and use the leave your card button on the virtual booth page to have someone reach out to you. We've uploaded a PDF of today's presentation plus additional resources, which you can access in the files panel. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get going. The problem and the solution, right? We hear a lot of times from my clients and other customers that they have issues when they begin their process of designing parts or going back for engineering change orders and the design cycle taking quite a long time, right? One of the most common pieces of feedback I hear from engineers is that they're stuck with people who are fresh out of college. And those engineers don't have the background in manufacturing or the knowledge about specific manufacturing processes to design parts that are actually manufacturable or they're adding features that unnecessarily add cost. I also hear a lot of feedback that there's just too many tools in our engineering tool belt. You guys are burdened with projects nonstop, and I can only imagine the difficulty you have going through those projects and using 10 different tools. The beauty of Apriori is that it can link seamlessly with your CAD software, as well as your other business insight tools to allow you to begin this design review process early on and avoid those expensive engineering change orders. And that's where DTC comes in as a solution. So what is design to cost or DTC as I've called it? So it's functionality that provides real-time visibility into cost drivers and manufacturability issues. And it aims to once again, prevent and decrease the effects of those expensive engineering change orders and allow newer engineers to develop parts within your system and process that are gonna be best developed to not only be manufactured, but also manufactured cheaply and effectively. So where can DTC be used? Well, DTC can be used in quite a few process groups and a priori, and it's an ever expanding list. One of the key primary groups is of course sheet metal, which is my primary focus for today, but it can also be used in plastic molding, stock machining and casting. So what I'm gonna do now is take a break to go into the software with you. And I'll then uh, show you some of the areas it can be used like stock machining and casting. And then we'll jump specifically into sheet metal. So within stock machining, which is, this is a part that is stock machined, right? We've costed in our stock machining process group in a default digital factory. And we're assuming that, at least I'm assuming that most of you have background knowledge within a priori at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip most of the generic inputs and go right to the area that we're focused on today, which is design to cost. If I switch over to the design to cost tab here, we'll now see that we have quite a few different areas of interest that Operator is presented to the user. Now this takes no additional work and appears as soon as you cost the part or as soon as you start to use Operator for cost estimation. And so it's an easy addition. It's not another tool on the tool belt. It's in a tool you're hopefully already using in your day-to-day. -day. Now I'm actually viewing this in the latest version of Operator, which is 21. So within here, we've actually gone in the separate feasibility guidance, which is your DFM or design for manufacturability and cost driving guidance, which is DTC designing for cost, right? And so what we're really focused on is DTC, but there are a couple other presentations during this conference that I'd highly recommend you look at that focus on design for manufacturability. With regard to cost, I'm just gonna take one second here to look at this stock machine part. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this review button and see what a priori might make for recommendations to 
reduce the manufacturing cost of this part or help align those costs with your expectations. So I'll click review. And the first thing it brings up to me, and actually the only criticism it has for this part in that category is gonna be a non-standard drill point angle. And so you can see here, it's got a hole that it's called out, simple hole one. It's got the current drill angle presented to you. And then it makes a suggestion of typically used standard drill angles. And so it's either 118 or 135. And a priori would recommend that you change the angle of this to reduce expensive engineering change orders or an increased cost during the quoting process. So that's within stock machining, just as an example. The next one we'll take a look at briefly is going to be sand casting. So, or die casting, I should say. So we're within a die casting process and we're looking at a part that's already been fully cost. I can go to my design to cost tab, just like we did for stock machining. And it's gonna pull up. And what's unique about this part is that we see there's actually no feedback associated to this part within the design to cost category, but there is feedback associated to it in the design for manufacturability category. Now there can be some overlap between these two, and it's always worth just taking a quick look. These are really issues that are going to lead to it being unmanufacturable or someone having large quotes related to that part because they're having difficulty manufacturing it, or it'll increase your scrap rate resulting in a higher cost. Design to cost is more focused on specific features that, like in machining, may require a different set of tools or may require extended cycle time. And the same could be said here if this required additional lifters or specific mold properties that would call out. So that's a little bit of how you might use it in casting, in the casting process group. And so now that we've talked about where it's used and given some examples of different process groups it can be used in, let's specifically take a look at a sheet metal part and see how that goes. So I'm back within a priori. And if I go to one of my sheet metal parts, and this one is bracket alpha, right? And I have a bracket beta. So I've made some changes on this part in accordance with the design guidance that I've received from a priori. We can take a look at what happens in that process and dig in deeper into that as we go forward. Um, really on the face of it, like I did with everything else, I just costed this part generically in a baseline digital factory and within the sheet metal process group. It's given me a cost for a, a fixed annual volume. And we're ready to now take a look and say, Know, what feedback might a priori have on this part? Well, in this case, we've got a good separation between fabrication guidance and extra processing guidance, quote unquote, are designed to cost. Um, you may have noticed there's been changes between stock machining and the casting and now sheet metal and the way this information is presented. That's because it is dynamic with the process group that you're choosing. There's always going to be different features that need to be analyzed and different properties that need to be taken into account. So in the same way that the geometry extracts differently between process groups, so does the design to cost information or the design for manufacturability information. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and open up our extra processing guidance and take a look at what it has to say about this. So here, it is suggesting that we have an extra hem process. And we might want to remove that. And what's really nice about this, going back to one of the problems I've heard from my customers, is that new engineers don't have that backing in manufacturability to understand where costs might be generated from these features. So they might be adding them to compensate for a design um, change that needs to happen. They might be adding them because it is just a requirement and they don't have another avenue. So they'll have to deal with the cost increases. There could be a lot of reasons, but this is just really calling it out and saying, hey, you might want to take a look at this and here's why. So in this case, it's saying, HEMS require extra stations to form, which increases the complexity and cost of the manufacturing process. This particular HEM requires three stations, bending, down over bending, and setting. Consider the need for this and remove if possible, right? One of the things I do like to do as a side note, when I review parts uh, for design feedback, I usually go here and turn on my GCD labels. This is going to show me the GCD that I'm currently selecting. It'll point an arrow to it. So I could zoom in there, and now we'll notice as we zoom in, we do see that hem on this feature, right? And if it was unnecessary, we could remove it at that point, reducing the cost of manufacture this part. So that's one avenue. The next one we have is within fabrication guidance. And so I'm going to go to review here. What we're going to do is take a look at what this might have for some review and design guidance there. So if I go here and I take a look at this, 
and I dive into the one that I really do want to take a look at today, whole edge proximity. What we're looking at is a priori suggesting that holes at the edge of this sheet metal piece, so it's referring to this hole here and a couple of the other ones on the edges of this part are too close to the edge that's being cut, right? And so it's making the recommendation that we should move those edges, those holes away from the edge by at least 1.9 millimeters versus their current distance, which is 0.3 millimeters. Now, this exists for casting, plastic molding, stock machining as well. And there's this icon here in regards to the issues Apriori defines. And so you can click on this to get more guidance on the issue and the recommendations that Apriori will make in reference to it. And so in here, it's suggesting potential problems, telling you some actions you can take, and how to resolve those issues if they are required or if they can be resolved because of the lack of design restrictions. And this exists for all types of feedback and really does give you a better understanding of that physical situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay on that. And so if I put myself in the shoes of an engineer, I might get that feedback and I would then go and edit that CAD file. And so in this case, what I'll do here is I'll switch over to a CAD file that I have edited. Right, and now we can take a look and based on that feedback, I've moved these holes a little bit out. And so now we've reduced our called out manufacturing issues. And now this part's gonna be more manufacturable. One thing that's worth bringing up here as a discussion, especially as we talk about designing for manufacturability or designing for cost, is how do these changes affect cost, right? And so one thing that's worth looking at here is if I go to my fully burdened cost for this part, at $9.21. And this is the post feedback part. If I look at my initial part and I go to my cost summary, this part costs $8.89. Now, I understand where you might be taken a little aback and say, well, based on that feedback, you would think my part cost should go down. And I would generally agree with you. Now, the reason it didn't in this case is because there have been some other changes around that design and the way we've made these design changes has increased the amount of material required and some other portions right so the cost on the face of it has gone up now what this number does not take into account because a priori is always a should cost estimation software it doesn't take into account those business relationships you might have with your supplier so as a good example right when we had this initial one where it's calling out these holes as design issues, your supplier could be scrapping a large number of these parts, and that could be why the should cost is off of your current quoted price, or is lower because your supplier is inherently quoting in the amount of scrap that's generated because of these design issues. And that's something you could alter via the good part yield within a priori, and there's other ways to represent those potential benefits. So I wouldn't worry too much on looking at a dollar or cent specific change so much as understanding the intent and how that could propagate down through your business conversations and conversations with the suppliers. And so to say, you know, we might want to reduce this to a different price because we know it's less prone to scrap and it doesn't take the same amount of tolerance checking and guidance from the machinist manufacturing the part. So that's really a, a brief demo of sheet metal DTC. What I wanna do is take just one or two minutes to step into how we can use DTC reporting values to report on aggregate parts to either look into specific suppliers, commodity groups, and better understand our design process in, in the lens of either a manager or someone that's working on large swaths of parts rather than the engineer who's doing one part at a time in this case. So, you can now see my screen and I'm actually sharing a, a, a report, an out of the box report that's contained within cost insight reporting. So cost insight reporting, if you didn't know, is a large scale business insight tool that links to your a priori reporting database and can be fed with all the information that your engineers are creating on a daily basis. There's a lot of out of the box reports in there. The one that we're taking a look at today is sheet metal DTC. One of the nice features of this report and to explain it a little bit what you're seeing is we have fully burdened cost plotted on the y-axis and finished mass plotted on the x-axis. What Opry then does is using a roll-up of parts that have been costed, using their costs and their finished mass creates a line of best fit for the parts contained in that roll-up and then generates two bound, bounding lines based on a standard deviation from that norm. 
And so what this allows you to do is really quickly start to look and say, how are items with a high DTC score or a high rating when it comes to manufacturing issues? This essentially translates to saying there's a lot of issues with this part versus a low DTC score, which would say operator doesn't see a lot of issues with the way this part has been designed. So when we look at something with a high DTC score, we would expect these to be above or beyond our lines of best fit. And that's the case here. And so look at these and say, you know, we really need to start looking at potentially some design revisions on these parts because a priori is reporting there's a lot of opportunity, not only for design revisions, but opportunity from a cost perspective when we put it in line with the rest of the parts in that commodity group or that suppliers group. What's nice about this data is we can also look and see most of the parts with low DTC scores are trending below our line of best fit, which indicates really that if we're able to take advantage of the feedback operators providing, we can reduce costs in such a way to get them to a better line of best fit or reduce across the entire commodity group as a whole. So the last thing I want to look at when we take these parts into account is to look at how we could potentially dive deeper into this information when we find outliers presented here. And so one of the things you can do when you're in this cost insight report view is you can click directly into a specific bubble and get more information on that part. So what I'll do is just go ahead and click into here. And this is gonna bring up a report, a DTC summary report specific to that part. So we have not only our generic cost information displayed at the front page of this report, but if I switch to my second page of the report, it will then give me a summary of DTC issues related to this part. So in this case, we can see total GCDs, there's 25, sheet metal, there's 13, 13, and machine, there's 13. The sheet metal issues that we have in this part are hole issues and proximity issues. And so we may want to investigate those further to better refine this part and make it in line with our existing knowledge of that commodity group displayed in this report. So I really appreciate everyone's time with this demo. I hope you found in, it interesting. And if you have any more questions about reporting, please feel free to reach out to me directly and post in those chats. Um, if you have any questions at this time, feel free to join me in the live meeting within this booth by clicking the join trade show button in the virtual booth. You can also download any additional resources on this topic in this virtual booth and schedule a time to meet with me on one-on-one -on -one for further discussions. You can also view other demonstrations on the main product demo page. I highly recommend, once again, the other presentations on design for manufacturability um, because they, they link pretty closely with the design to cost features I've discussed here. So thank you and have a great rest of your day.